Dallas Fort Worth is massive and finding the right place to live can be overwhelming. That's why in this video, we're going to help you find the perfect spot. So at least you'll know where you don't want to live. And we're going to help you narrow down that search and more importantly, rule out about 90% of the areas you don't want to be in. So hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be ready to reach out to us and make that next move reality. Hey y'all, we're your local Dallas Fort Worth real estate experts here. And in this video, we're going to really help you go through the Metroplex. We're going to show you the map. We're going to, uh, you'll see some clips of different areas, different neighborhoods, all that kind of stuff. Cause we get clients that uh, relocate from all over all different kinds of lifestyles. Right, actually one of the most prominent clients that we get outside of the norm would be actually traveling professionals, especially traveling nurses. So in this video, we're actually gonna be covering some of the best neighborhoods for frequent flyers. Yeah, we'll also talk about retirees. We get a lot of folks that wanna to retire to Texas, whether they're trying to be closer to family or you know, perhaps they just wanna get out of the cold. So we're gonna talk about three of the best, uh, I guess, areas that folks end up relocating to. We're also going to show you some extremely popular Fort Worth neighborhoods and suburbs that a lot of people have been looking for. And then a lot of people want some land with their house, so we'll talk about rural living as well. And then lastly, our sleeper pick. This one you won't want to miss. I guess let's talk about a little bit of the area in between Dallas and Fort Worth. So if you're somebody that maybe travels a lot um, and you want to stay close to the DFW airport, so like, by the way, like Frisco and McKinney, like Frisco is probably 35 minutes from DFW airport. Uh, McKinney is going to be a little bit further, but, uh, a couple of other areas that people are always interested in is going to be Keller and South Lake, uh, and a little bit of Colleyville as well. So South Lake is expensive. Very, <laughs> very expensive, but it shows it's a gorgeous place. Incredibly well taken care of nice yes. houses. Yeah, I feel like um, it's it's very family oriented. It seems like there are, it it seems like everybody that I've met that lives there is some kind of business owner. So like, if you want to, if those are the kind of neighbors you want to be next to, or they're in finance or some kind of, you know, something, right. yeah, then that's a good spot. Um, and they have a ton of shopping there as well. Oh, they do. They've got that uh, that South Lake Square or whatever, mm -hmm. that big outdoor mall. Yeah, it was really cool. We went, uh, we've got another video on that, but we went and had lunch there, walked around. It's very cool. Um, very dangerous if you have a spouse that likes to spend money. So yes. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> keep that in mind. Uh, but yeah, and then you have Keller, which is uh, just to the west of that, which you describe Keller as? I describe it as Diet South Lake. So <laughs> if, uh, if maybe you don't want the opulence and expense of South Lake, but you want all of the cool doodads and bits and bobs, Keller's a great compromise. So you're gonna spend probably about two to $300,000 less on your house, but it's still gonna be a really nice house and a really nice area and some phenomenal schools. Yeah, and like South Lake has uh, a country club. Mm -hmm. Keller has a golf course that you can be a member of, but it's also open to the public, so. Kind of shit. Yeah. Diet South Lake. <laughs> uh, and then you have Colleyville. Colleyville is very interesting. Like, there are some really nice neighborhoods there. And then it's like you're driving along and then there's horses. Yeah. And it's uh, it's just a little, it's a little bit of a hodgepodge. Not what you would expect, like, right next to the airport and everything. Yeah. But they have beautiful homes there, a lot of that stuff. And, like, uh, by the way, South Lake, like, most of these areas are built out. You will find some new homes going up but it's not like there's gonna be multiple new home subdivisions to pick from and, and yeah. all the different price points. And I really like this area because Colleyville specifically, like he was saying, has a lot of ranches, is very green, and they fight to keep that greenery. So a lot of these developers will come in, see a big plot of land and think, yeah, that's a good payday for me. Mm -hmm. And the people of Colleyville actually historically, and th this happened a couple of years ago, there was a news article out about it, they fought back against a developer who was trying to buy up one of these plots of land. They're like, hey, we want to prevent them from doing that because we don't want to just be elbow to elbow with our neighbors. We still want to keep that wide open space, that nice greenery, preserve some of that. And it turned out there was actually a bunch of protected trees on that land mm. that they couldn't develop. So they ended up winning that one. Um, so if you're looking to move to a place where you don't want to just be bumping elbows with your neighbor all day, that's a great place as well. Yeah. And, uh, 
It, just south of there is Arlington, which we mentioned before. The uh, one noteworthy neighborhood, I guess I would mention. Oh, and, and we should have mentioned before, like uh, the Carroll ISD, which is South Lake and the surrounding areas, is one of the top school districts in our area. So, mm-hmm. uh, and, and you can find more information. A lot of our info comes from niche.com. Uh, that has school rankings, all that kind of stuff. So, um, but yeah, uh, on the north side of Arlington, you have Viridian, which is a master plan community. It's beautiful. They've got like this giant lake with an island in the middle. And so, as far as amenities go, like they have a little sailing club, they've got uh, multiple swimming pools, volleyball court, just tons of trails. I mean, it's it's a really cool spot, and you're like dead center of the metroplex. So like, you're only going to be 20 minutes from downtown Dallas, downtown Fort Worth. You've got uh, different ways to get up to Frisco and McKinney. So that's also a popular spot, especially if you know you got a spouse working in you know different places, that kind of thing. Um, and then I guess honorable mention H E B. Yeah. So H E B. Uh, well, first of all, for the native Texans, no, I'm not talking about the supermarket. Although that is awesome. awesome. <laughs> if you've never been to an H E B, go visit one. H E B is what we lovingly call the northwest corner of the Arlington area. So if I, oops, never mind. I don't want to mark that. I'm trying to move over here. So you can kind of see it here in this corner. You've got Hearst, uh, Bedford, and I can't see the moniker for Euless, but it's over there. Um, Euless, Hearst, and Bedford uh, make up this little triangle, and I call this the hidden gem of DFW because you're right. You can see right here. You've got the uh, DFW International Airport over here in the corner. You're like a hop, skip, and a jump, and you're right there, but you're not in the flight path, so you don't get all the planes and everything like that. On top of that, if I zoom out here a little bit, you got Fort Worth over here to the left, super close because there's the HEB area. Uh, you're right here on the what is it, the 183? Mm-hmm. Phenomenal location, but I'll tell you what. Nobody goes there, and I don't know why. Yeah, it's one of those areas. Like a lot of the homes are older, and Mm -hmm. a lot of times it's hodgepodge. Like you'll, you'll it is a bit of a mixed bag. Yeah, you'll have like a nice neighborhood, and then all of a sudden there's like industrial stuff. So, like it's just like I feel like there's a lot of different pockets there. Mm -hmm. But Um, it is very affordable, and I think the location is to die for. And you can, yeah, and you can actually find some larger lots as well. So Mm -hmm. that's cool. Um, Cool. Moving on. Boy, there's so much to cover. Like, I yeah, feel like we're, we haven't even made it to like the Dallas and Fort Worth portion of the map yet. We're still in North yeah, DFW. Like, uh, yeah, there's they, and there's so many different neighborhoods and everything else. But this is so big. Like, if if we got into detail and everything, you guys would fall asleep. It'd be so long. <laughs> um, but okay, should we talk about? Uh, should we talk about the outskirts of Dallas-Fort Worth a little bit? Yeah. Like so the actually, east and west? Or? Let's hop over here real quick because you'll notice we got like these lakes. really big monikers here next to these lakes. So up here we've got, uh, what is this, Ray Hubbard? Uh, or, Ray no, Hubbard's, this is, this is yeah, Ray Hubbard. I think that's Lake Levon. Yeah. So we've got Lake Levon up here in the north and the Ray Hubbard right here. These are really popular areas because of the surrounding cities to them. So you, uh, I don't know why it goes away every time I go to circle it, but you can see we got garland right there uh that's a really big uh sub city in the dfw or in the fort the dallas side of the metroplex uh but right over here if you take this road over here you've got wiley and it's a bit of a small sister city all of this leads around here to this city right here so rockwall is a really nice area it's a great way to get away from dallas and on top of that you're right there on the lake uh um, it's a really big destination place for people who have a little bit of extra spending cash uh, and want to be close to to Dallas. Yeah, Rockwell to me seems like a, a lake town that just exploded. Um, so like you you still get some of the lake vibes, but mm-hmm. it's 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 definitely grown pretty quick. I've I've always liked this as a place to buy because the property taxes here are lower, which we haven't mentioned that, but property taxes are going to be all over the place depending on where you buy. And that's something we can help navigate as well. But in uh, Rockwall and Heath, Heath is just south of there. Uh, there's a lot of growth happening here as well. It's cool because you've got the lake so close to you. Uh, the only downside to moving to this area, I guess, number one, it's close to downtown Dallas. So if you're going to be working in downtown, this might be a place to consider. The only downside is there's only two highways that go over the lake. Yes. And so 30 is going to be your main one, and that one gets clogged quite a bit. And then your other one, yeah, it doesn't really connect any major highways. So like if you go over the other one, you're like going up and around. Yeah, you got to go through all the arterial roads yeah. to get anywhere. So there's not a huge benefit if you're trying to get downtown. And so they have been expanding that highway. I don't, 
I think they're done now, or if not, they're real close, but I don't know that it's going to be yeah. enough. Yeah, that's your chief complaint. So if you work on the east side of the lake, you're golden. Yeah. Um, do, do we want to do a lake segment here? Is that what this turned into? I mean, maybe a little bit. It is a really like, nice should lake. Should we talk about the other lakes while we're here? Yeah, sure. Okay, so the next one is uh, Lake Louisville, which is going to be like... Uh, just a little bit north and to so the center. So if I zoom out, you can kind of see it right there. Yeah. So this is a big party fun lake. Mm -hmm. uh, and on Rockwall, Rock, or Rockwall, um, in Rockwall and on Lake Ray Hubbard, you can have docks. It's a real confusing thing. The city used to own the land in between the houses and the lake, and then they did something else. And so there are some docks out there, and I think they're making it easier now if you want to put one in. Um, but Lake Louisville definitely has docks. And they, uh, that is a huge party lake. They've got Party Cove. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're out there on the weekend, people are going to be out doing all kinds of recreational stuff. And so they also have a phenomenal fireworks display every year. Yes. Huge fan of that. We used, me and my family used to go out there on like kayaks and watch it every year. It was awesome. Probably the highlight of the year. And on the South side, uh, man, it's been a few years since I've been, so I assume it's still there, but they have a place called sneaky Pete's. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. Have you been? <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. I, know, I was too young to really, you know, okay. go in or anything like that. So but. back, back when I used to run around that lake before I got arrested on it i uh <laughs> we would go there and play volleyball they have drinks they have live bands every uh usually on the weekends like, it's just a cool cool place it's it's what you would want a lake restaurant bar right it is be. really cool they yeah got, like you can drive your boat up a nice that setup kind of stuff. yeah so uh anyways they have some places like that on lake louisville that make it make it pretty cool to go to and then um uh just west of there you've got lake grapevine so this is not one that you can build a dock on uh, this is for flood control. That's why yeah. uh, there's two types of lakes in Texas. One is for drinking water. The other is for flood control, basically. Yeah, this one's not a very interesting lake. Uh, honestly, whenever they first flooded it, because I remember when they did it, they didn't get rid of any of the trees, so you couldn't do anything on it because people would stump, sink their stump, boats stump. Yeah. <laughs> all the time. I mean, it's gotten a lot better. Like, you're not really worried about that anymore. But again, you can't build on it. There's not a lot to do. Most of it's covered, or like half of it, the only thing you see is like the dam front. Mm -hmm. Um, but I mean, if you just need a place to go hang out on the water, it's a, it's decent. Yeah. So like if you lived in South Lake, which is just South of that Lake, uh, you're not too far from, from a body of water, I guess. Mm -hmm. Right. Which uh, that's the other thing too. We didn't mention, uh, South Lake, so many ponds. It's like, it almost seems like d any neighborhood you're in, is going to have some kind of fishing pond for the kids, mm -hmm. which is cool. Um, making our way, making our way downtown, um, <laughs> Yeah, so closer to downtown Fort Worth, you got Lake Worth, uh, which is that little body of water. And this is, uh, there are some houses on here, a lot of these for uh, leaseholds, and they've started converting them. But you've got older homes. Some people have come in and started knocking down those houses to build nicer ones. And that is, uh, that puts up right to Lockheed Martin and uh, the Joint Reserve Base. So that's something we didn't talk about. That's one of the big employers here. In yeah, the, the, in the biggest employer. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're watching this, you might be moving here. Right. Uh, so the lake is definitely an option. It's a constant level lake because I believe they use it to cool some stuff at the base. I don't know. Yeah, they use it for uh, a hydroelectric plant, too, if I'm not mistaken. Or is that uh, – actually, that might be Eagle Mountain. Uh, lake Arlington That's is – uh, yeah. cools, yeah, some stuff. Um, and so Lake Arlington is – if you want to point that out real yeah, quick. It's, just, whoop, it's a pretty small lake. Right um, and so Arlington schools are average. They're okay. Yeah. So uh, – and then Eagle Mountain up at the top. So Eagle Mountain feeds uh, Lake Worth, and this, this is a massive lake. I mean, you can spend 30 minutes driving from one side to the other. They've got marinas out here. You'll see sailboats, all that kind of stuff. There's a really cool beach on the south side uh, that has volleyball, pavilion areas, uh, multiple boat ramps, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And they have a couple of restaurants. One of them, I believe, burned down. I don't know if they rebuilt it. I remember this that. This was a few years ago. Yeah. It was horribly ran. Well, I mean, so this area is actually really like an outdoorsy kind of thing. Uh, like this whole area, you can see here, they're like a, res a preserve and everything. Yeah. Uh, they've got like a, a goat island is out there, mm -hmm. um, the national park. Uh, so it's a really big outdoors destination. And I thought it was really odd. One time while we were out here filming, we found that there was a holdout community in the middle of the preserve, yeah, yeah. which is pretty cool. I don't know if I could find it real quick if I zoom in. 
you can yeah there it is so this this right here yeah, it's, it's a like little one loop yeah it's just like three roads yeah. but they held out whenever they designated it as a preserve and kind of cool allowed, actually yeah you're not allowed to build there so that's the only place you could buy a house in there yeah but as far as like uh so eagle mountain you can also build on mm -hmm. and that is gonna be man you talk about a hodgepodge i mean you've got like trailer parks up against the lake and then you'll have like a gated million dollar community it's just a little bit of everything around eagle mountain so depending on what you're looking for there's gonna be options um one of the biggest uh i guess one of the biggest neighborhoods is the resort and this is gonna be on the northeast side of eagle mountain and they are still building new homes out here. So if you want something new, you want to get into this, it's got a golf course, it's got some other amenities, uh, but the biggest thing is just you're right there on the lake. And so if uh, if you are looking at that, I think the biggest complaint that we've had when we've shown people this neighborhood from out of state is that you're just a little bit further away from everything, right? So yeah. like the Alliance Corridor, you're probably 25 minutes from. To get to a grocery store, you're probably 15 to 20 minutes. So it's just a little bit more driving, uh, but it is a cool community. Yeah, because you know, like, it's, it's not going to stay that way for long, though, because you've got, uh, what is this, Avondale up here. You've got Rome and all that, and then you've got Saginaw down here. And these guys are building out really quickly because they're, they're uh, starting to grow a lot faster than they can keep up with. And so people have started moving in this direction, which means development and commerce and everything's going to start going that way. So it's not going to be a long drive for too, too long. Yeah. Uh, so if you're hunkering down for the long haul, might be a good option. Um, okay. What else? Um, Lake Granbury, Benbrook, yeah. Granbury. Let's hit Benbrook first. Okay. So Benbrook, uh, Lake Benbrook is down here on the South side. Uh, can't build on it. Nope. Nope. It's, uh, dammed off and everything. So I believe it's constant level or they try to keep it constant at least. I don't know. Um, I, I just know guys go fishing out there. Mm -hmm. That's about it. Yeah, there's, <laughs> most people don't go to Lake Benbrook. I mean, that's so weird now that I'm thinking about it. It's like, like it's not. Yeah, a they big, go to hang out, but the, there's not yeah, much to do. There's a bunch of uh, horse trails out there if you want to go ride your horse. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, there's not. That's interesting, isn't it? But the, I guess there's not a whole lot around there. Like, no, it's but, just recently started getting built up to. Yeah, so Benbrook didn't really used to be anything. It was just like a little sub city or whatever. But they, you could see, you can kind of see Google started outlining all this development stuff here. But it started growing this way as people start going up what 377 there. Mm -hmm, there's mm -hmm. a lot of neighborhoods. We got like Bella Crossing and uh, Whitestone and every or uh, yeah Whitestone over over in this area. Yeah, really so, pretty. Yeah, so Bella Crossing is like one of the. Uh, I guess most economical uh, subdivisions if you want an acre of land and be close to downtown Fort Worth. Uh, there's also, there's a few other areas to the Northwest as well that are more heavily treed mm -hmm. where you can find nice homes, uh, good price points. And some of it's going to be in the Alito ISD, which is a very good school district. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll come back to that in a minute. Let's talk about Granbury. Which isn't really in DFW per se, but if you look here, it's worth a mention. This is Lake Granbury, so it's, a, it, what, like maybe a 45-minute drive? It looks forever away, but yeah, it's only 45 minutes. Oh, yeah, because like once you get past, uh, once you get past like all of this here in Benbrook, it just flies. You go straight down this, and nothing stops you. It's like a 70-mile-an-hour highway. You'll be there in no time. Yeah, and they just did a pass around Crescent, so like you don't hit the railroad track or yeah, that stoplight. Yeah, so it's like literally, I think there's one stoplight along the way, and uh so this is worth mentioning, number one, because it's, it's a cool lake. There's a couple of restaurants on this. Uh, it's a, obviously, you can see by the map, it's a flooded river. And it's just, it's a really cool town for a couple of reasons. This is the, I believe, number two retirement destination in Texas. I think the number one was down near the coast. So if you're trying to avoid hurricanes, but you want to be in Texas, this is the place to retire to. Um, and so a couple of things to mention about it. So they've got a really cool downtown area. They've got a square. There's always, they've got restaurants. There's always shows going on. There's things to do. They're really good about planning events. So there's a lot going on if you're somebody that likes to be active and get involved with the community. The other thing that they have here is I think they have, they had a, a lot of different types of living, right? You could, mm -hmm. you could, you know, have cows out here and have a little ranch. You could own a secluded lake house or you could be in one of these what i would call more of a master plan community with a lot of community activities and things like that so 
I think it's worth mentioning the the main three. Uh, so if you are looking at retiring, we have a bunch of videos on Grayberry as well. But you have Harbor Lakes, which is going to be the closest to downtown. And it's... Uh, yeah, you'll have to point this one out. I don't think I've ever been to Harbor Lakes. Yeah, it's right down. Oh, You're going to have yep. to scroll a little bit. My bad. So, yeah, maybe you can circle the square oh, yeah, yeah. there. Oops. And then... Um, so we got downtown over here, and then Harbor Lakes is like right yeah. in this area. So they've got a golf course there, and then you can see there's a bunch of canals that are cut in. So these are technically different neighborhoods, but I consider it all Harbor Lakes because it's all in that one area. Uh, there are... They are talking about, there's this little area over here next to the lake where they're talking about building another master plan community. I'm pretty sure it's on a floodplain though. And uh, so I'm not sure what the story is on that, but it could be coming here in the next couple of years. But uh, anyways, Harbor Lakes is a cool place. There's a lot of lake homes on the canals there. Uh, and then you have, and of course the golf course, and then you have De Cordova Bend. This is where my parents live. Um, I would love to live here as well. This is a gated community. It's technically its own city. People consider all of this Granbury, but it's technically its own place. They've got a golf course. Um, they've got, they just remodeled their clubhouse. They've got um, obviously a, a restaurant there. They've got a 19th hole. Uh, they've got uh, volleyball. They've got a marina. So this is a place where you're going to see most of the people drive their golf carts around to go do things. And they have a ton of events, things like that. So mm -hmm. this is a great place. And you're not far from downtown and everything else. The nice thing, too, for people that are looking to commute is this is on the Fort Worth side of the lake, which is going to save you a lot of time. Oh, my God, yes. Getting yeah. through the downtown portion of yeah. Granbury takes a minute. So there's two negatives to Granbury. One, going through that main strip to get across the lake, ton of stoplights. And in the winter, the sun's in your eyes. <laughs> it's the worst part. And then number two, there's not a lot of hospitals. No. Uh, I don't know that they have any hospitals. They have emergency clinics and things like that. But, you know, as you get older, that's definitely something that people consider. Now, you are going to be not too far from uh, the hospitals in Fort Worth. You're 40 minutes probably from the ones on the south side and probably 50 from the ones near downtown. Uh, so I know what a lot of people will do there. There is a care flight membership where you can basically, you pay a monthly fee, and if something happens, they send a helicopter. I mean, right? that's pretty cool. Yeah, right, so that's uh, that's not a bad gig, but, um, but that's the other negative. And then the last neighborhood in here worth mentioning is, not to say that these are the only ones worth mentioning, but these are the major ones, is Pecan Plantation. This thing is ridiculous. So this is at the end of the lake. So the downside here is you're not going to be on the lake per se, you might have, uh, it's, it's almost like a little creek that runs around. Um, mm -hmm. I guess technically it's a river. Uh, isn't that the Brazos? Yeah, so it actually, the Brazos actually goes, as you can see here, it connects, it's it goes all there. the way around. Uh, so you've got like this almost moat around a, a, a phenomenal yeah. little neighborhood. This one's cool because it's got what? Two a, golf courses. A runway. like. Uh, yeah, you can fly planes in and out of there. Mm -hmm. uh, stables. Sta stables, archery ranges. Uh, there's like a campground, I think. Yeah, yeah. So if you have somebody that's rolling in with their RV, there's a place for them to hook up. Same with the De Cordova. Yeah, and it's that. it's not just called pecan plantation for for the heck of it. Like it's actually a giant pecan orchard too. Yeah, and their clubhouse looks like they still have slaves. Um. <laughs> it's very colonial esque. <laughs> uh, yes. But uh, and then obviously tennis courts. I last time we were there, there was like a band playing in the parking lot for some reason. They're getting. Oh, set I do up. remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, so there's always a ton of things going on. They even have shopping. Like they've got an Ace Hardware. They've got mm -hmm. a wine store. They've got all these inside of the gate, right? Like you don't, like literally mm -hmm. don't ever have to leave your neighborhood for the rest of your life if you didn't want to. <laughs> like, yeah, they, there's a supermarket too. <laughs> or, uh, well, a food market at least. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I, it's another big destination. They're still building houses here. So they've been building houses, I think, since like the 70s or 80s. Uh, and they're still building. That's how big this place is. So there's a variety of options to choose from, variety of prices as well. So uh, that's uh, definitely a place that uh, that I would consider. And the other thing about Granbury, they've got wineries, they've got breweries. There's just a lot of cool stuff there. So it's also a really historical place. So any history buffs or anything like that, like Jesse James uh, used to live here. Uh, I think uh, even John Wilkes Booth at one point hid away in here after the assassination. Yeah. Uh, so there's a lot of historical markers and things about the city 
uh, just because of how old it is. Yeah, and so guys, like if you're watching this video, you're like, oh, I'm never, I'm not retiring, whatever. A lot of people actually do weekend trips here. It's so, like if you want to get away and get a little bit of that small town feel, maybe run oh, a boat. The lake is great. There's yeah. stumpies and oh yeah, I, yeah, it's all yeah. young people and everything. So there's still younger crowd. I know we've been talking up retirement. Oh yeah, yeah, families <laughs> definitely there. I think, Absolutely. I think the retirement population is like 30%, right? Yeah, I mean, so it's not like you're going to be surrounded by geriatrics yeah. if you're like, hey, I'm 50 and retiring. Totally cool. Like, <laughs> yeah. like my grandpa retired there and I used to go to Granbury all the time before I even knew he lived there. Yeah. Yeah. Before you were he old enough to know what Granbury was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> cool. Uh, all right. Let's keep this rolling along. I feel like we just slobbered all over Granbury. Oh, a little bit. It's great. Uh, I get excited but about it. While we're on the south side of the Metroplex, we're going to go ahead. I think the farthest south we really need to do is what? Crowley or um, Cleburne. Uh, Cleburne. So Cleburne is a more economic option if you're trying to live outside of the city. It's not the cleanest city or the nicest city, but it is getting a lot better. So it started off and it kind of had a bit of a stigma around it, but they've done a lot to really progress it, especially with how many people have started moving there from Fort Worth. Yeah. And then if you're somebody that's like trying to get away from the hustle and bustle and just kind of want to be away more of the small town feel, we've got Joshua and Godley. Yeah. These are great cities. Uh, so Right over here, you can see. Uh, right about see there. The, yep. So there's Joshua, if the pointer is going to work with me here. Joshua oh. and Godley. Yeah. So both of these areas have like a real small town, rural type feel. Uh, both are blowing up with the new homes. It's like new homes and nothing else. There's like a taco place in Godley and not even a coffee shop. No, not that's, yet. Yeah. So that's like. Yeah, uh, they have a Sonic, but it's attached to a gas station. Like that's how <laughs> small we're talking here, as far as that goes. So, yeah, those are those are good options. And uh, what we found is there's a lot of people that are really moving out from the Metroplex to get further away. This is kind of where they're heading. Mm -hmm. um, there's some really good developments in Joshua as well, since it is right there off of the uh, the main road here. So you can see 35 splits off, and then you get this road here. Josh, it goes right through Joshua, and it gets plenty of like travel it's got good schools you can get new homes there on at least half an acre easily in the city and i feel like the same thing is going to happen to godly once this happens which i know it's eventually going to happen with how many people are moving there it's just going to explode yeah and just to give you guys an idea like it's only 30 minutes to godly from downtown because of the chisholm trail uh tollway but it is a tollway right so that's a bummer mm -hmm. now um since we're down in this area, you want to talk about the the crotch of Fort Worth? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I the right here in the. Uh, dictionary definition of a crotch of these two highways is Burleson, which is a really nice and interesting city. It's a great mix of uh, um, rural and suburban mm -hmm. at the same time. So you've well got said. these really cool, huge plantations and, and swaths of land right across the street from these nice little neighborhoods, um, nice two th early 2000s, late 90s houses. Um, it's it's growing a lot too. Home of the yeah, home of the elk, my alma mater. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we didn't have a thing, honestly. I don't think. I don't know yeah. if they have one now. <laughs> Maybe you <laughs> might have just started it. I don't know what the elk it. antler <laughs> sign is, uh, but yeah, like I grew up out in the country. Like we had a few acres, we had horses, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and last time I drove back there, it's like a lot of the cities moved towards the the country. But mm -hmm. there is off to the uh, uh, the east side there, there is a lot of stuff that's too rural where you can get an acre, a couple acres, and it's pretty affordable for what you get. And so the school district here is A rated, according to Niche. So is Joshua. Godly is trying to get there. Yeah, I think I it's think B plus. Like, yeah, something like that. Yeah. So all of these are great options, especially like if you're somebody that's uh, looking at maybe working in downtown or maybe at Lockheed Martin or something like that, this could be an option for you. Um, let's talk a little bit about the west side because we have we kind of skipped over that. Yeah, before we get too far onto the Dallas side again over here, we've got, uh, this one's a big one. So we've got this little city here called Weatherford. Horse cutting which, capital of the world. Yeah. Um, they, uh, wow, these guys grew very quickly. And uh, it's been a big, this is another big buzzword whenever people think of moving to the DFW area, is they eventually land on Weatherford because they want to be close to 
all of this over here, but they don't want to be in all of that. Uh, Weatherford still very much has like that old town, small town feel to it, um, but maybe not for long. <laughs> yeah, it's like you want to smell the bakery, but you don't want to eat it all the time. Right, yeah, you don't want it in your backyard. That's probably a horrible analogy. I, I, I get it, they you want to eat it. Probably, yeah. maybe. Yeah, maybe. Okay. There's probably a better one for that. But <laughs> Weatherford's really cool because, like I said, it's a lot of older architecture. They've got, like, this downtown area that's centered around, like, this old tax building. It's really scenic, and it's got, like, you can kind of see it here, this little circle drive that goes around all of it. But I think the location is great, too, because you've got this uh, this highway right here that leads you straight into Fort Worth, which they're working on widening because it's two lanes at some point, which I thought is a terrible idea. Um You've got the lake right there, and on top of that, you've got Alito just to the south. Um, so if you've got a kid in football, they're going to be going to a lot of tournaments down there. Yeah, a lot so of games. Alito is well known for their sports program, uh, football, and also uh, baseball. Football primarily. It's Texas. That's what we care about. <laughs> um, and so Alito is one of, I would say it's one of the most popular uh, destinations if like you're living or you're working around downtown or Lockheed Martin or something like that as in terms of like some of the best schools and just kind of where people are headed to the, uh, and there's a couple of neighborhoods here to note. Like if you are looking in this area, we've got a ton of videos on these as well, but Walsh is going to be the first one. The, uh, pros to Walsh, this is going to be the closest thing to like Winsong ranch and pecan square that we talked about earlier with just a ton of amenities. They've got, multiple pools they've got multiple parks they've got a fitness center they've got a maker space which is like cnc machines and woodworking that kind of thing they've got a garden area uh dog parks they've got uh, a couple lakes where you can take out the kayak or paddleboard uh fishing convenience store yeah yeah Little playgrounds everywhere yeah so like yeah and you name it, they got it. Zip line without the line. Yeah, they used to have a zip line. Now it's just the zip. <laughs> we went out. Yeah, we were like everybody talked about it. it was like we got to go find this thing, and we found it, and it was. Yeah, this... somebody got rid of the zip line. Yeah, we don't know what happened. Yeah, yeah. there's no zippity doo dah anymore. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is being built out. It's a master plan. It's going to be much larger than what's already on the map. This thing is going to be massive. Uh, but they just opened a bunch of new models there, and this is going to be like kind of middle of the range as far as new homes go. Like it's not going to be it, most of this stuff's going to be 400 and up, mm -hmm. um, decent decent prices. Right next to that, uh, you've got Morning Star which is, I think it was started before Walsh, and it's very similar. It's like Diet Walsh. Yeah. yeah. It's it's <laughs> still got a ton of good amenities, not as many as Walsh, but you can get a house that's significantly cheaper, and I would say comparable to what you can get in Walsh. Yeah, I, yeah, I would agree. Um, I think they're going to have more higher-end houses in Walsh than you can see in Morningstar. Like, I think so, there's too. There's going to be like, I mean, they're nice houses in Morningstar, but I feel like there's just like one more level to it. Yeah, it's like almost a level of Walsh. polish that they put yeah. in there that, yeah. you know, still yeah. nice. And then uh, honorable mention, Parks of Alito. So this is a massive neighborhood that is right near the high school. So if you're in Walsh, you're probably about 12 minute, a 12-minute 12 drive yeah. to the high school. Uh, this, you could literally make your kids walk if they're trying to find it on bad there. Or, or you could... Uh, Actually, I don't know where it is on the map. I know it's like off in this area. I think it's up here. Is it? Yeah. Oh. Parks oh, yeah, of Alito. Parks of Alito. Yeah. Wow, I was way you off. You overshot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like downtown Alito is is pretty much nothing. Um, there's like a roundabout and a couple shops. They did open a press cafe, so mm -hmm. there's a place to hang out there. Um, but yeah, there's uh, Parks of Alito, Master Plan Community. Um, the big pull to this is they have a ton of walking and biking trails, like off. Yeah, it's like, not sidewalks, like actual. It's like twenty-seven miles or something like yeah. that. It's crazy. Yeah. So if you like outdoor stuff, could be a good option. Um, cool. All right. Next. That's pretty much it for the west side, because as you can see right here, it's like very still green. Um, there's still a plenty of room for them to develop and everything like that. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at some of the guys here on the south here. So we already talked about like uh, Burleson. You got Crowley as well, which is just kind of a little bit more Burleson, but not quite as nice. Uh, but if we head over here, there's some very honorable mentions. We got uh, Kennedale, which is a bit more industrial than most people prefer to, you know, put their roots down in. But Mansfield, 
oh man, this is going to be something. So even right now, it's growing a lot. And its sister city over here, as soon as Google stops freaking out on me, Midlothian, these two guys are going to be like huge hubs in the south dfw area uh, especially considering if we're going to go back to the highway system here you can see how they connect so with mansfield right there you get a straight shot up into downtown fort worth you take this right here this goes straight up into the airport you take it down here this goes straight up into downtown dallas like it's a phenomenal area as far as like getting around the metroplex and we've seen a lot of uh, traveling professionals start moving to this area not only that with how much commerce is going down there it's got a ton of things to do so downtown mansfield is great they've got like these really cool eateries they've got all kinds of businesses going up this is where uh the future yollywood or ye hollywood is going to be they're they're, they're building like an overflow uh shooting studio for yeah. like uh cinema down there uh and midlothian has phenomenal schools mansfields are good but midlothians are like on another level and on top of that you're right next to one of the lakes we forgot to mention joe pool lake which is mm -hmm. a really cool lake so this goes all the way up into i think grand prairie on its north side mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's got all you can see they've got all these parks there's a ton of things to do um lots of outdoor stuff and it's just a really big lake um, yeah they've got um they've got one restaurant out there Oh, which they yeah and they renamed it like a year ago and is I, that the one over by the that ramp we usually go out yeah of? yeah yeah exactly yeah so uh, we, we go out on this like a lot it's a really fun place to go and they got the big kahuna which is like this huge party barge you can oh yeah can it's got like a and slide party and everything go. yeah it's two stories tall yeah it's a cool area unfortunately like this is an overflow lake and so every i don't know five six years the restaurant floods and they shut it down for a while but <laughs> uh but it's a cool lake it's a lot of fun um yeah. and there are actually a ton of master plan communities so there's two notable ones right here south lake and summer or uh, south, south point south point and <laughs> somerset um both phenomenal they've got really cool um uh, like amenities they've got water features really nice affordable houses i'm talking like i think you can get into south point for four hundred thousand, um and these are these are really nice houses as well big names chesmar yep. bloomfield the works and you've got m3 ranch uh right across mm. the highway from there which is also very nice homes somewhere in that area yeah and yeah there's a ton of really nice sub like subdivisions going in and there's also like on the west side a lot of that is more rural so mm -hmm. like if you're looking for something to where you can have some land this is a good place to do it and it's not overly expensive um it's a really interesting area because like like we mentioned it seems like all of the new growth is happening to the north whereas the growth that's happening on the south is not as much and it seems to be a lot more locals that are just trying to get out mm -hmm. um but this is the one area on the south side that's a little bit different because there is it does seem like this is primed for a lot of commercial growth as well yeah they're they're playing it smart they're they're yeah. thinking ahead and there's highway expansion that's coming down through there as well so it's like yeah there's there's a lot going on here i feel like this is this is the sleeper pick if this mm -hmm. was like the nfl 100%. draft you know like, yeah yeah so but yeah that's definitely a good destination yeah and if we actually head a little bit further down that highway there so just for reference oh great schools as well oh yeah Sorry. yeah should have mentioned that very uh, family oriented I, I should mention as well so this highway here is 287 and if we keep going down this highway here you're actually going to find uh this place down here and we recently did a video on this this is waxahachie now i'll say right now it's a very old city there's a lot of old buildings. It does have a very old feel to it, but so many people are moving there that they're starting to build it up and they realize they need to grow or they're going to die. And they've decided to grow between those two options. Uh, it's blowing up. Yeah. A couple of cool things about that. Number one, uh, the lake down there, you can actually mm -hmm. build on that lake there. We visited a new home community. There's two new home communities going up right next to the lake, which is mm -hmm. cool. And then uh, there was probably one of the most affordable acre lot new home communities going up as well that was by uh golly it was like Something. a local builder wasn't it or yeah uh, i didn't recognize the name personally. yeah they've been building a lot in dallas um but yeah some ranch i can never remember the name of this oh, Something ranch. oh god it's well, a really cool name. I do remember that one. So yeah. I, we, I'd never heard of these guys. Apparently, they were really big on the Dallas side of things. Neil, I'll get you the info for this if you could just put it up on screen. These guys had a really cool neighborhood set up. I love the ideas that they're doing with their their builds, especially those uh, not the townhomes that aren't townhomes. 
Um, oh yeah, that was yeah yeah that was a smaller neighborhood. I was thinking about the one with Acre Lots though. Oh, I thought they were building out there as well. Yeah, both of them, same builder. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. We're on the same page. Yeah, but like, I, yeah. I, if they're bringing products like that to that neighborhood, it's going to be phenomenal. Yeah, and the um, yeah, yep, yep, yep. Um, but yeah, the the Acre one, like you could get a good size house for five hundred thousand. Mm. and under 500,000, right? Which is unheard of really anywhere yeah. close. And I say this because you're only what 35, 40 minutes from there to downtown Dallas. Yeah, if that. Yeah. Cuz this is this was a pretty straight shot. We took the long way and ended up going this way one time and this was the the short portion of the trip. Yeah. So, yeah, it probably 25 minutes honestly. Yeah, so if you're somebody that's like looking to be outside the city, you want some land, that could be a good destination. And there's uh, a couple colleges there, so it's it's really interesting like just there's a hodgepodge of people there. So I feel mm -hmm. like it's a pretty, pretty decent melting pot. Um, speaking of saving money by moving out, we want to talk about Forney in that kind of area. Yeah. So I remember Forney was actually where I sold my first house whenever I started working with Tom. Uh, this guy, <laughs> he Jack uh, drove everywhere. Bless his freaking heart. This guy was approved for less than two hundred thousand dollars in twenty twenty. Did you guys start looking in like Weatherford we, or something? We started off looking in South Fort Worth. South Fort Worth. And yeah. as prices skyrocketed very quickly due to COVID, this man drove across the Metroplex with me. Oh my God, like easily 10 houses a day <laughs> and for almost six months until we finally landed in a town I'd never even knew existed, uh, Forney. Actually, he, he landed in Crandall, which is like right next door. But here's Forney. And it used to be a nothing city, kind of like Prosper, but it is exploding. So you can see here we got Heartland, uh, a tally. There's a, I don't, I don't know if I can see Crandall on the map at the moment, but it's really close. I want to say Crandall's like in that area over there. But this area is blowing up so quickly because so many people are moving out of Dallas and they heard the cry and have started building houses at the cyclic rate. Mm -hmm. There's like a, the Heartland is actually the name of a, a development that just got so big. They're calling themselves a city. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, the, just massive growth. I think last year, or the year before is the fastest growing city in Texas. Mm -hmm. So there's yeah, huge flock to this area because you're really close to downtown, right? You're what, less than thirty minutes? Yeah, if it's that, probably like twenty. It doesn't take long at all because if we zoom out here a little bit, you could see it's uh, a straight shot. Yeah, you just take this right here and it spits you right out. Last but not least, let's mention um, some retirement communities. So if you're somebody that's looking for a fifty-five plus community, Ropes and Ranch on the Fort Worth side is going to be a great option. This is just north of Pecan so Square. Got and i have a difficult time finding it on the map sometimes but uh, there's north lake it's north gonna be a little lake. bit yep. further north there so there it is yeah so this is a huge community we've got a video on this of course and they have been building this for over a decade they're still building i mean golf course um, swimming pools uh, tennis courts pickleball courts this is, I mean, there's so many activities going on here. Uh, we actually interview one of our past clients here that lives here, loves it. There's just so much going on. They've got a restaurant. Um, what else? Softball, dog park. Yeah, dog park's a really big one. What um, was that game they were playing next to the dog, dog park? Oh, yeah. Uh, um, it wasn't, it wasn't it was horseshoes. Badminton, wasn't it? Oh, they, were well, they, they do things have, along the. Oh, shuffleboard. Yeah. Is that so what it was? They had, well, I can't remember. They've got bocce. They've got horseshoes. That's what got it was. Bocce, bocce ball. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyways, <laughs> tangent, that's going to be one. <laughs> um, and then the, the uh, Frisco Lakes is going to be another. So this is going to be on the east side of um, the lake, Lake Louisville there. And so Ropes and Ranch, they're still building homes. I mean, this is a massive, huge playing community. Uh, the, oh, there it is. Yeah, Frisco Lakes is built out, I think, I think maybe they stopped building around 2015. But this thing is also massive. It's got... Um, golf course, of course, they've got swimming pools, tennis courts. I mean, you name it, they've got it. They've got a whole fitness center. Yeah. That clubhouse looks amazing. Honestly. Yeah. Yeah. It looks, I don't know if it was redone recently or what. It looked really nice. Um, conference room, all that kind of stuff. So there is uh and you're right next to the lake. So if you are somebody that likes to go sailing after a round of golf, you could do that as well. But, um, apart from that, there's going to be a, a bunch of like smaller communities that are not, that don't have golf courses and all that other kind of stuff. Um, 
And actually, the pricing between uh, that one and Ropes Ranch are going to be pretty similar, but there's going to be a lot of other communities. Uh, one, I guess the only other one to mention was is there's one in Viridian uh, towards the back of it that's got some of their own amenities on top of all the Viridian amenities. So that would be another option where they're building new as well. If you're somebody that's maybe semi-retired or you travel a lot, want to be close to the airport. Uh, but apart from that, you're going to find most of them are just going to have like a clubhouse and maybe one swimming pool, maybe one or two courts or something like that. It's not going to be anything like match plan over the top. So that was, that was a, a lot. Video. <laughs> yeah. So regardless of what you're looking for, we'd love to help. We've got agents in all areas in the Metroplex uh, that are experts. So if you are looking to buy or sell, please don't hesitate uh, to reach out to us. There's going to be links in the description of this video. Uh, we love Calendly calls if you want to schedule one of those or just reach out. So as always, if you're looking to buy or sell, remember to keep calm. Call Tom. Guys, if you made it this far in the video, this is actually part two of a two-part video series. And if you want to learn more about Frisco, Plano, or the North Fort Worth area, go check out part one linked on screen. And if you're ready to take the next step, go ahead and set up a call with us. We'd love to hear more about uh, your journey here and help you out. You can find a Calendly link in the description below. Or if you're not ready and you just want to see some properties in the areas that you like so far, you can find a link there for our search. And you'll also get our newsletter, which has market updates and all the latest and greatest and some videos that you're not going to find on our YouTube page. Uh, apart from that, yeah, if uh, you want to keep watching, we have some uh, Dallas, uh, Dallas playlist right here. And some Fort Worth playlists right here. There we go.